Hey guys, I Spiteful here and today I'm bringing you a video discussing my top 5 worst Warzone weapons, so sit back and let's get started. Coming in at number 5 we have the High 5 Rocket Launcher, a quote unquote advanced rocket launcher that fires 5 Hydra mini missiles that will lock onto ground and air targets. This weapon only just made the list due to the fact that when compared to other weapons it actually looks somewhat good. Don't be fooled though, this weapon is easily the worst of any rocket launcher in the game. I would honestly take a regular rocket launcher over the high five, it is that bad. So let's start by talking about its perks. This weapon is able to lock onto ground units as well as air, which means you can actually snipe enemy Spartans using it. Seems like fun, until you realise that is about all the weapon does. Its damage is still poor even after its recent buff, and for a whopping cost of 6 wrecks, you will feel nothing but regret after purchasing this at a wreck station, especially when you can buy some insanely good weapons at the same cost. So with that being said, it feels like the High Five doesn't really have a purpose, and that honestly might be the reason why it is rarely spawned in Warzone today. At number 4 is the Dying Star, a weapon that I'm sure you guys never expected to see on this list. When I first used the Dying Star, I genuinely felt like it was the coolest weapon I'd used in Warzone. It looked, sounded and felt epic to use. We are now well over a year into Halo 5, and I don't find myself spawning this weapon anymore. Why you might ask, well the truth is, the weapon is not all that great. Seeing a wreck cost of 5, it is reasonably priced. The weapon fires adhesive pulse wave explosives that can be tagged to walls, vehicles and even Spartans. These explode after just a few seconds. The initial impact of the shot causes damage and then the explosion that follows does more damage, often resulting in situations where you tag someone who is one shot as they run behind a wall and you still pick up the kill. However, on a deeper inspection of this weapon, you begin to realise its flaws. Its painfully slow time to shoot is one of the most frustrating parts of this weapon. You have scenarios where you just wish you had a faster shot time to kill people who are running away. The weapon also suffers dramatically at close range. Shooting someone up close to you is a terrible idea, but you end up with little to no choice because there is nothing more you can do. These reasons are why I choose to spawn the Barb Lance Light Rifle instead, as it is one rec level cheaper and when put in the right hands can easily beat the Dying Star in a 1v1 scenario. At number 3 we have the Twin Jewels Binary Rifle, a weapon that time and time again I have tried to like. From first look, the weapon seems incredibly good until you actually spawn it in. Believe me, it is only downhill from there. So what does the Twin Jewels MA Frillian offer for its hefty 7 rec price tag? Well, for a start it fires dual beams that are claimed to enhance its anti-armor utility and its shots last longer than a regular binary rifle. And well, that's about it. So with a cost of 7 wrecks and only 2 traits, you would expect those specific perks to be exceptionally good, right? Wrong. Its long lasting shots make it a nightmare to kill Spartans as you often kill one person and have to wait what feels like an eternity to shoot again, unless you reload after every single shot. Now steady there, I know what you are thinking, the weapon is anti-vehicle, of course it's not going to be great at killing Spartans. Well, turns out it's not that impressive at killing vehicles either. Yes, the weapon is great for taking down ghosts and other light vehicles, but at the latest stages of the game, when you actually get this weapon, it is unlikely that you will see many of these vehicles. Instead, you will be greeted by heavy vehicles, examples being the Oni Mantis, Wraith Ultra and Banshee Ultra, all of which take far too long to kill with this weapon, especially when you stick out like a sore thumb while scoped. If you want a weapon that kills Spartans and vehicles effectively, do yourself a favour and buy an endgame Spartan laser. At number 2 we have the Safeguard Sentinel Beam, a weapon that garnered so much hype before its release due to its history in the Halo franchise. You just simply cannot hate the Sentinel Beam, it's such a cool weapon. Well at least that was what I thought until I used it in Halo 5. This weapon could have been acceptable at 3 or possibly even 2 wrecks, but 4 is way too steep. The Sentinel Beam has no real perks unless you consider a painfully long time to kill something positive about this weapon. Every time I have spawned this weapon in Warzone I have been left frustrated and disappointed. It is certainly in desperate need of a buff right now to even be considered a usable weapon in Warzone. Simply making the Sentinel Beam kill a little quicker and have a significantly higher amount of ammo could easily turn it into something great. That is all that needs to be said about this weapon. And finally, coming in at number one is the Rocket Pod Turret. <laughs> 
I don't even know where to start with this weapon. I have so many unanswered questions. Why is this in Warzone? Why is it 4 Rex? And why is it so painfully bad? I think it's safe to say that none of these questions will ever be answered, but I can assure you that this is the worst weapon you could ever possibly spawn in Warzone. So where do I start? The rocket pod turret can be spawned in at rec level 4 and you would have to be crazy to do so when you have weapons like the Whiplash, Blazer Glory and Pro Pipe on offer for the same cost. Just like with any turret, your mobility is severely hindered, your Spartan will walk extremely slow and your turn speeds are dramatically reduced, making it easy for someone to get behind you and hit you in the back. Now, this mobility reduction wouldn't be so bad on fairly small maps, but this is Warzone, and considering a lot of the maps are huge and very open, you are not going to have an enjoyable experience walking from base to base. The rocket pod turret also fires multiple missiles at a time, making every Spartan kill a complete overkill, often wasting more missiles than you really need to. That is something you are going to want to avoid doing, considering the ammo count in this turret is almost non-existent. Now, don't worry, because I am aware of the upgraded and supposedly better Oni rocket turret. That turret comes in at 5 wrecks, and believe me, it really is just as bad. The turret can lock onto enemy vehicles, but trust me, the target lock-on range is so close, you might as well be standing on top of the damn vehicle, and its ammo count is just as miserable as the standard version. Turrets have never really been popular in Warzone, but a fair few are still usable. These ones, however, should be nothing more than some extra wreck points for you. So that about wraps up my video of my top 5 worst Warzone weapons. Feel free to tell me your personal top 5 worst Warzone weapons in the comments below or suggest future top 5 videos you would like to see here on my channel. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Peace.